Hello and welcome to another postseason edition of the Red Zone. In what was their toughest test in almost two months, the North Central Cardinals persevered and defeated the Carnegie Mellon University Tartans and their stout defense 28-7 in the second round of the NCAA Division III Football Championship. Next up, it's the quarterfinals and a top 10 clash in Naperville on Saturday against Ithaca College, with the winner advancing to D3 football's Final Four. To break down the game as well as look ahead, I'm joined as always by Cardinals head coach Brad Spencer. Brad, congratulations on another victory and thanks for coming back on the Red Zone. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, Alex. So last week when I asked you about, you know, what were you looking ahead toward, your big thing was we're just happy to be playing football for another week. So how excited are you that your team is onto the semifinals after the fight they showed on Saturday? Yeah, excited. Uh, we thought Carnegie Mellon was a great football team and it was going to be a tough test and it turned out to be that. Proud of how the guys played uh, team football, uh, winning the turnover battle, winning the time of possession. Uh, our defense, of course, showed up again and uh, set another school record and uh, just continue to do what they've been doing really the last two months. And fortunately, our offense was able to pull out a couple of big plays and get just enough done to, to get some points on the board and, and win Saturday to, to advance. So before we get to the points you guys did put on the board and all the fun parts of this game on Saturday, I do want to go back to the beginning of it. A game that looked really nothing like anything we've seen you guys play this season. Zero points in the first quarter. Ethan at only two yards of carry, I believe, at halftime. What was Carnegie Mellon doing defensively that was posing such a challenge and a unique challenge to what your offense has faced this year? Sure. Well, we knew that they were going to be a stout defense coming in, and they pride themselves on turnovers and stopping the run. Uh, and they were just a good job mixing up what they were giving us and took us a little bit of a, a while to kind of figure out where we could poke and prod and find some openings. Uh, fortunately, we were able to do that, make some big plays. Luke did a nice job staying patient uh, in the passing game and also using his legs and then uh, got some stuff figured out. But they did a great job. Uh, we, we expected that. We knew they were a good defense. We knew they played hard. They play physical. They get to the football. They tackle well. Um, so they did everything we thought they would do and uh, just took us a little bit longer than we had hoped for to, to get going. You mentioned poking and prodding as well as Luke using his legs, and I think that was the one noticeable thing in the first half that did seem to be working pretty well as either QB designed runs or him scrambling, despite the fact that Carnegie Mellon spied him more consistently than I think we've seen any team do it this season. What was the offense able to do to counteract that, or is it just simply a case of Luke being almost unspiable because of how quick he is? <laughs> uh, part of it is catching him in the right front or the right blitz or the right coverage, uh, but Luke certainly is dangerous with his legs, and if we have a one-on-one -on -one matchup with him and a defender, we certainly feel positive about that, and uh, it turned out he was able to take advantage of, of that. Something you mentioned last week was the desire to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers, particularly D'Angelo Harding. We see him score your guys' first touchdown of the day on a nice fade route in the end zone. We see him split the defense on the next drive for the biggest gain yet of the day. How have you seen him handle the pressure and almost the expectation of this point at just the amount he's asked to do in this offense and the weight he's asked to carry, particularly with some depletions at wide receiver. Sure. Well, I mean, he's in his fourth year in the offense, so he certainly understands the offense, and he's really made uh, a lot of strides in the last year and a half, two years, and understanding defenses. So we're able to get into meetings with him on Tuesday and uh, show him the film, show him on the board what we want to do, the different ways we want to use them, and the answer is usually, yep, makes sense, thanks, coach, yep, and, and we just move on and do it. Uh, fortunately, he's able to handle it, and uh, you saw Saturday that once we were able to get the football in his hands, whether it was throwing it or, or tossing it or handing it off, uh, things started to open up a little bit. Uh, Carnegie Mellon was doing a good job of getting, getting seven, eight guys into the box to stop our running backs, and uh, we felt like at that point we needed to get the ball outside a little bit, and uh, D'Lo was able to do that. In addition to the plays that were being made by the likes of Luke and D'Angelo, the two plays that really seemed to be the biggest turning points of the game were the two strip sacks yep. by Dan Gilroy and Tyler Rich. <laughs> and, of course, Dan Lester recovers both of them because he's just everywhere in the offensive backfield this season. How did those moments feel like they changed the game from your perspective as a coach from the sideline? How do you feel the energy change when those two guys make those plays? Yeah, we were saying it on the sideline, especially the offensive huddle, was we've got to wrangle back some of the, the momentum, and the defense was able to do that, especially when you do it in their end near the goal line. Uh, but those two guys uh, are you know, the anchors of our defense. Uh, that entire D-line has, has been the anchor of our defense. So 
uh, it's great to see them step up and make plays in the biggest games and, and have some competitive excellence to them. Uh, no surprise, they've been doing it all year. Um, and, and Saturday was really no different, but very timely. Uh, we needed them, we needed a little bit of a boost. Uh, the offense needed a little bit of a boost, and I think they got that once we got some of those plays by those two guys. So in the fourth quarter, the dam finally breaks. You guys are able to rattle off some big plays. First, we see Ethan's 60-plus yard run that unfortunately doesn't end in points. And then, of course, Luke's run to really shut the door, get to that three-touchdown lead as he just sprints away from everybody. Do you think you just wore their defense down eventually, or were there adjustments being made that you think led to those big plays finally coming through for you guys? Yeah, it's probably a little bit of a both. Um, you know, I'd like to think that our offensive line and our running backs and tight ends will wear our defense down over the course of four quarters. Um, but there, there's also some, you know, figuring out where you can get guys loose. And you go into a game with uh, a game plan to uh, attack the different looks that you're going to get from the defense, and then you have to see what they're going to give you. And uh, that can sometimes take a little bit of a time. But I think both, um, you know, they're both explosive football players, and uh, they both can run fast and, and make plays and make people miss. And uh, it just took a little bit of time to get them into space. But uh, fortunately, our whole team, uh, all three phases, stayed patient. Uh, everybody was positive the whole game. Uh, there, was, there was really no big ups or downs. Everybody was just staying patient, waiting to make their plays, and uh, it turned out to work out in our favor. And specifically on that run by Luke, what are you seeing? What are you thinking as you're watching him run down the sidelines? And does it feel like the, your entire sideline and the entire stadium kind of exhales there <laughs> as they cheer, as they see him peeling away and knowing that you're going to win this football game? I'm typically asking the guys up in the box, you know, is, is he going to outrun everybody? Because on the field you can't. You don't have a great angle of it, uh, other than just knowing that he's usually one of the fastest guys on the field. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely an, an exhale when, when you make that run and able to get down there and score. And the next drive, I mean, we're in the red zone, we took a knee, so we felt like uh, we closed out the game, we finished. And, and that's, a, that's a big trait that you need going forward, uh, playing football in December, is, is you have to be able to finish. Uh, it's going to be four quarter games, you've got to be able to fight for 60 minutes or more. Um, so it was great to see the guys do that. So this week, it's Ithaca, a run-first team that plays good defense. Sounds like a familiar identity to <laughs> me. As we start this week, I know you're probably still early in your preparations for Saturday's game. What type of challenges are you anticipating them posing? What kind of game do you think we're going to see on Saturday afternoon? Well, another really good football team that's really well coached uh, on offense are very multiple in what they do. They have a quarterback that's actually really similar to Luke, uh, can deliver the football, can run, uh, is very dynamic. Um, on defense, they're very well coached. They're in the right place. They're disciplined. Uh, they play really hard. Uh, they tackle. So yeah, there are some similarities there. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, but we're excited. Uh, we're excited to be playing football. Our guys love being around each other and playing. And, and obviously, this is another step uh, along the path of where, uh, where we hope to be. Well, for all of us at NCTV 17, this is our last football game that we're producing this season. So we're really excited and looking forward to the weekend as well. Hopefully we can be fans next weekend <laughs> for a semifinal in Naperville. Brad Spencer, thanks as always for coming on the show and good luck this weekend. Thanks, Alex. We appreciate you guys and thanks for all the work you did all year. It's really first class. Opportunity is everywhere. It is in everything and within everyone. Your opportunity is at the center of all that we do so that you can exceed your personal best. Welcome back to the Red Zone. They've been stars of the show for the last couple of years, and in Saturday's second round playoff victory over Carnegie Mellon, sophomore quarterback Luke Lanin and senior defensive end Dan Gilroy were once again center stage. And they're once again guests here on the Red Zone. Luke, Dan, congrats on another victory and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So I do want to start with some of the big plays of the day. Luke, your long touchdown, 72 yards to finish it all off. Can you take me through that play and what's going through your head as you see that small crease that you end up being able to sprint through? Uh, so what happened, uh, so I go to hand the ball off to Ethan, and then I see the defense on that side, they start flowing too far, so there was nobody there besides the corner. So I pulled it, and then D'Lo made a great block on the corner. I was able to cut up underneath them, and then it was just off to the races from there. 
and I outran him, so it was pretty fun. And then, Dan, the defensive line, you guys have been good all season. You had yourselves quite a day. Two forced fumbles, including that second one, Tyler Rich hitting the quarterback. Harder than I think I've seen anybody hit the quarterback this season. How did you experience those two plays in particular and the way they changed the game? Yeah, um, you know, it's awesome being able to help our team make plays. Um, and, and Tyler has had himself a number of, of games now in a row where he's had two sacks. Um, so it's, it's really fun being a part of that group. And then Luke, in terms of, you know, the, you know, maybe the hardest hit we've seen from Tyler Rich there, I think that might be the fastest we've seen anybody run this season on your touchdown run. Obviously, anybody who's watched North Central football the last couple of years knows you're very fast. Is that the fastest you think you've ever run on a football field? Um, I felt pretty fast on that, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'd say it's, it's up there probably for my fastest speed. All right, so let's go back to the beginning of the game. Dan, outside of the one touchdown they score, this was a lot like the Lake Forest performance for you guys. What's going right for the, the defense, particularly early in the game, as you guys then end up getting punt after punt forced? As the offense is slow to get into the game a bit, what's the messaging for the defense as you guys are kind of holding things together there for a bit? Yeah, we, uh, you know, they, they came out and had some looks that we hadn't seen on film before. Um, so we were a little bit slow to start, but uh, after a, a few plays, we were able to get it under control. Um, you know, our, our job is to just try to go out and keep doing what we do in practice. You know, our, our mentality is, you know, if the defense or the offense can score seven points, hopefully we should be able to, to win a game. Obviously, that's not always going to happen, but, um, you know, we just try to keep swinging, keep going. Yeah, Luke, speaking of good defense, obviously Carnegie Mellon was playing some very good defense early in this game. From your perspective at quarterback, what were you seeing that they were doing that was posing a particular challenge for you guys early on? Uh, I think one of the things that they were doing, they were just bringing a lot of people, uh, a lot of blitzes and stunts up front, uh, maybe confusing us a little bit. And I, I know when I saw all the blitzers, I was kind of panicking a little bit. Uh, not sure where to go with the ball sometimes, but... We ended up figuring it out and started getting a hold of things. As you can see, we started scoring later in the game. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what they were doing uh, for the most part. And then also, they were spying you more than I think we've seen any other team do this season. Once you notice that that's a theme of the defense, how does that affect your thought process at all? Um, it doesn't really affect it a ton. I mean, after every play, we pride ourselves on like carrying out our fakes. So, I mean, when I'm not getting the ball, I hand it off and I try to carry out the fake as best as I can. So then on plays where they get lazy with their spying and they start running towards Greeny uh, or Terrence too much, that's when I can take advantage of it. So Dan, we've seen a lot this season, particularly the last couple of weeks. It seems like you and Tyler Rich are getting into offensive backfields more and more. This game maybe being the best example of it. Had you seen anything on film ahead of this game that made you think that was going to be a weakness you could exploit? And how do you and Tyler push each other to be better players? Yeah, uh, you know, we, we didn't really see any particular weaknesses watching film. Uh, we just try to approach each week the same as we do any other week. Uh, I think as, you know, we're both fifth year seniors, um, once you get into the playoffs, we know we don't have any more eligibility and Coach Spencer and Coach uh, Durking always talk about how we're on a one week contract. Uh, so, you know, we, we know we don't have any guaranteed games after the game we play on Saturday. Uh, so I, I think that playoff mode can really, can really get you going. So for both of you guys, what did you learn? What did this game teach this weekend that maybe less competitive games, shall we say, might not have taught over the course of the season? What are you going to take with you into Ithaca next week? Yeah, just uh, you know, playing with a, a last play mentality. You never know when your last snap is going to be, so every snap you get is, is valuable. Yeah, just going along with what Dan said, uh, just making sure we give it our all every single play, not taking plays off. And we, I think this was a good experience for us, go, uh, starting uh, down and starting behind in a game. I mean, a lot of games in the past, we start out on top. We win by 50. This game is more of a challenge, and I think we needed it. And that's really important for the playoffs to be in those situations before like the really big games. Speaking of the really big games, two games down, two more wins, and you'll be in the Stag Bowl again. What would that mean to each of you? you wanna take it? Um, I mean, like we've said, uh, we need to like focus week by week. But of course, if we would make it there, 
Uh, it'd mean a lot to me uh, just because getting the fifth year guys there because they do a lot for us. They didn't have to come back. Um, I mean, I think the fifth years are a big part of why our team is so successful this year and last year. So, uh, I mean, it would just be really great to send them out on a good note. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, uh, like Luke said, I'm just trying to take it week by week. I think, I think all the guys on the team are. Uh, but to, to make it back would, you know, would be a, a dream come true. You know, obviously, goal, the goal is to, to win it. Um, but that would, that would be awesome to, to get back to the Stag Bowl in my, in my last year. Absolutely. Well, you talk about taking things week by week. We'll keep taking it week by week here in the Red Zone as long as you guys keep playing. And hopefully next week we've got another win to talk about and we're looking ahead to a semifinal. Luke Lane and Dan Gilroy, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. We all have a story to share, stories others can relate to, whether moments of sorrow or of hope and inspiration, whether a story of struggle or a moment of victory. Every little moment captured and shared helps us to feel more informed, helps us to feel more engaged with and connected to the community we all call home. Every little moment captured and shared adds up to something greater for us, that something is the collective story of Naperville, a city rich in its volunteer spirit, its diversity, its traditions and celebrations, and so much more. In Naperville, there are so many stories worth sharing. And for the past 35 years, it's been our honor to tell those stories and share them with you. Thanks for tuning in to The Red Zone. Thanks as always to Coach Spencer, and thanks of course to Luke and Dan for coming on the show. It's a triple header of Cardinal sports action at home on Saturday. Starting of course with the quarterfinal matchup of North Central football against Ithaca College at noon on NCTV 17 and NorthCentralCardinals.com. Win or lose, it will be our final NCTV 17 produced broadcast of Cardinals football for the season. Thank you so much for tuning in all year, and we hope you can join us once again on Saturday. After that, it's a doubleheader of Cardinals basketball on NorthCentralCardinals.com against the North Park University Vikings. The women's teams will face off at 5 p.m., and the men's matchup will follow that, so I hope you can tune in for those games as well. Hopefully, we've got yet another victory to discuss next week here on the Red Zone, but until then, I'm Alex Campbell. Thanks for watching.